going to sort of go a little bit off piece from where we were up until now. I mean, we've, we've, we've looked at Wiser up until this point, um, but then we, we sort of veered off and did the, uh, did the, the traditional stuff. Uh, but I'm going to bring it back to Wiser tonight, um, and it's really going to be a bit of a sort of an answering questions based on the stuff that people are asking me when we're trying to upsell Wiser to them. So as I, if you saw the promo video, the whole gist of this is really going to be if you if you go in to replace something, maybe an LP or a, or a Digistat or whatever, we want to be thinking why am I why am I fitting why am I replacing an LP or a Digistat? Why am I not fitting Wiser? Why am I not pushing Wiser? So that's really where, where, what we where we're at. So from my point of view, when I do this, if I go in, the instant response from the customer is how much is it going to cost me? And obviously there is going to be a cost implication because depending on what you're upgrading from depends on what, what the sort of costings are going to be. I mean, if, if you take something like this, which is a, an RF700 pack or RF701 with a Digistat Plus 3, these retail at about 100, 100, maybe 110 quid. You'd be replacing it with a Wiser Thermostat Kit 1 around about the £150 mark. So there's about a, about a £50 differential if you're going from an existing wireless stat. But you've got to remember that the, the customers have already got a wireless stat, so you can't really sell it on the fact that you're moving over to wireless because they're already there. So the things you'd be looking at there are the comfort and convenience that it gives the customer, but also the energy savings. If we also have a look at, say, like an LP, you say they've, they've got a defective LP. Now, we know from what we've seen that they can go in and they can replace that with either a thermostat kit one or kit two. LPs are going to retail sort of around the £60 mark. These, again, round about the, the 150 So, as well as the smart aspect, we can also say that the customer is getting a wireless staff as well. So, we're upgrading them from wireless controls to, uh, from wired control to a wireless control. So, as well as the smart and all the other bits, that's what they're getting. So, in terms of the actual hardware they're getting, they are getting more hardware, but they've also got this whole other world of smart controlling it on, a, on an iPad or a tablet or phone. So if we look at the comfort side of that, obviously we've got app control, we've got IoT integration, so we can, we can automate our, our scheduling, if you like, using things like IoT, um, IFTTT, um, and if you want to use Google and the uh, Amazon, I won't, say it, I won't say it because it will set mine off, uh, but if you want to use the Amazon voice control, um, which we all know what it is, uh, also, obviously, remote access, so they can access the heating system from away from home. And really what we want to be doing is we want to be getting the customers thinking about their heating system more than they do now. If you think about it now, they might go to their programmer twice a year to change the clock. But other than that, the schedules are the same. They'll, they'll be roughly set up when they first install it, and then they'll stay the same. What we really want the customers to be doing is looking at their heating, looking at their energy con consumption, and making changes based on their lifestyle and obviously the way we can promote that is through the ease of doing that so you know trying to go through on one of these programming it is not as easy or as elegant as using something like the ipad even to the point you might say well the customers don't have a smartphone they don't have a they don't have a tablet what can we do about that there's absolutely nothing wrong with quoting you can, you can pick up a, a tablet for around the 35 40 pound mark doesn't have to be massive spec but you can you can stitch that into your quote. So you you could be taking a customer from having even if they've got no controls at all, not even an iPad. You could you could um, you could get that for them and, and dress it up as a package, a wiser kit, plus a plus a cheap tablet. So we know that they get plenty of uh, sort of extra control. They've got smart apps as well that or smart modes that you can use, but. Really, the energy savings is what we want to major on because this is really where you get your payback. So we've already said that these controls will cost more than if you go for the traditional equivalent, but this is where you can sort of claw back some of the savings. So the, the figures are, if you've got no controls at all, so if the customer is just controlling their boiler through on-off on the boiler, if you move them to a, to a, tr a, a, tr a traditional control, it's around about a 50% saving. If you then add on a smart control, so if you so if you go from uh, tr traditional controls to smart, it's around about an extra 10% saving. So that's going from something like an LP to a wiser thermostat kit one or two, depending on what the what the flavour is. So around about a 10% saving is what you'll make. 
Now, we've, we've, you've all seen these before, the, the smart radio the thermostats for the multi-zoning. If you go down this route, obviously there's more hardware, there's more cost, but your saving can be around about 18%. And that's, that's official figures that we've got from BEMA using multi-zoning. So you can see that by multi-zoning, going in, set, shutting off rooms when you don't want to heat them, and only heating the rooms that you do, but obviously without the massive upheaval of having to cut pipes and dig up floorboards, you're going to get around about an 18% saving if you go uh, if, if you if you go down the multi-zoning route, it's 10% if you go with just the thermostat kit. So there's a good, good saving to be made. You've also got smart mode, so you've got away mode, which if you haven't seen seen it before, that allows you to set the set a blanket temperature across all of your zones that you then toggle on and off where, if, if you leave the house. And that's the one that you can integrate with IFTTT. So if you, if you move away from a geographical location, it will then drop the system into a way mode. So if you can do that, round about 24% is the sort of likely saving uh, that you're going to make using a way mode. If you use it effectively and you actually, you know, when you leave, you do, you do have it kick into a way mode. So about 24%. And if we look at eco mode, which is the weather compensation side, there's about a 7% saving. So just briefly, eco mode it is time. You, you've got your... You've already got the intelligent bit where the, the, the control will, will kick off before the end of the time period. What eco mode does, it just takes into consideration the weather conditions outside and it will, it will move that off period. So you'll find as you get closer and closer to summer, the off period gets earlier and earlier each time until you get to the stage where your heating doesn't come on. So the more that you can automate the system, and that's what this control will allow you to do, the, the better the savings you're going to get. And it may only be sort of incremental each day you think well you know i'm saving a minute of gas but obviously over a, over a, over the period of a year that's where it that's where it starts to add up now that's all that all sounds very well but the you know the, from the customer's point of view they can't really see it but that's why if you have a look at our app we've now got the insights pane and we've also got the heat report so insights it's a bit like your smart meter readout, so the customer can see exactly what they're spending and how many, what they're using in terms of boiler hours with their, with their current setup. If they make changes to their schedule or they use any of the smart modes, you'll be able to see, they'll be able to see how that makes a change on Insight. And then if you want to get into the real granular detail, we've got the home heat report. So you're able to, you're able to go in and you can graphically see what you're using, what, what, and when you're using, and that's where, where we can really encourage the customers to really look and analyze their lifestyle and say, well, look, were you actually at home then? Did you really need it at 21 degrees? Could you have got away with 20? And again, ch chopping bits off here and there doesn't sound much, but cumulatively, it starts to add up. So from the customer's point of view, that it, from, their, from their question, what is it gonna cost me? It is gonna cost them some more money, but this is how they can start to claw it back. And obviously, the, the longer you have the control in use, the more you will be, you, the more you'll start to benefit from the payback from the energy saving. So that's what they that's what they get for the extra money. From your from the installer's perspective, why you might want to do it, we've talked before about the ease of control. So you, we we know it's on the industry standard backplate, and as long as you pick the kit of the appropriate flavour, you'll be a, you'll be able to just clip it on the backplate. I'm going to take you through a couple of quick demos again in a minute just to refresh. Not going to do so much on the app. This is more going to be for the hardware of actually upgrading and what changes you need to do if there's a wired thermostat in. But obviously ease of installation is really, really good. There is an opportunity for you to, to, to book out some more time on the jobs as well because if you go for something like a multi-zone kit as well as fitting the, the, the main heat hub, you're also going to be fitting the smart radio to thermostat. So how much time you have on the job will be proportional to how many there are. I would leave yourself a little bit more time because, again, you've got a bit of app work to do. Take it through the installer mode. Not going to really major too much on that because I've sort of covered that to death in the past. But as the installer, remember, you go in, you add all the devices, and you then hand it over to the customer for them to complete registration. So there is perhaps a little bit more time that you might want to put on the job, um, particularly if your customer's not particularly au fait with using apps and smartphones, you might just want to hold their hand for that bit. But there's some, certainly some opportunities to be able to sort of make more of a job than just going in, swapping a, swapping a control. Um, and also from, your, from the installer's point of view, the biggest thing that you want is confidence. You want to know 
really that the customer can't ask you any question that you're not going to be able to answer. And the way that we can ensure that you, you're in that position is by the training that we give and the resources that we provide. So we, we're obviously doing these live sessions that you're, you're more than welcome to participate in if you've got any questions. Even when the, the videos aren't live, any questions you stick in the comments, you, we will come back to you on. We've got the Drayton community, so you can always reach out there. There's Twitter and there's all the social media, so there's plenty of opportunity for you to reach out if you've got a particular question. We're going to start resuming once this uh, COVID-19 is over. We're going to start resuming the face-to-face -face training. They're going to be a little bit different in so much as they will tie in with a bit of online training as well. So when we, when we do the face-to-face, -face, it will be purely practical, really. So you can really get stuck in that way. Um, and we've also got the online academy. So as well as doing the, the Wiser Installer training, the face-to-face, -face, you can also go through the, the, the Drayton Academy where you can get accredited. And obviously, if you're accredited as a Wiser uh, approved installer, that's going to give you customer confidence that you know what you're doing. But it also gives you access to things like the dedicated support. So we don't want, we want to make sure that if you get any issues when you're on site, you've got the dedicated support uh, through, the, through the dedicated uh, support number. And obviously there are future opportunities. So if you go in and you, you get a good rapport with a customer and you fit, say, a, a thermostat kit, there's always the opportunity in the future to, to give them a bow and say, how are you doing with your, with your, with your smart controls? And then you can start talking about multi-zoning. And if they're interested in the multi-zoning, then there's a fairly nice job to go in, swap out their existing TRVs, maybe the old Volv body that needs to be changed. But again, it's an opportunity for you to encourage more work from the customer, but without really doing a, a whole lot of humping up floorboards and some and real heavy lifting. So that sort of brings me on to the demos. So I'll take you over to the training boards. I've got two to show you. And this is really a, just a recap of what you've seen already. I'm not going to do too much on the app. It's going to be more the nuts and bolts of what we do with what we're faced with when we get on site. So let me get you over. And again, I apologize for the noise. I will get around to sorting this and making it a little bit quieter in the focus of time. But let's, let's, let's kick off with this system that we've got set up here. So you can see it's, it's a standard S-Plan system. And let's say, for instance, the reason you're going in here is there's a defective, L, a defective controller. I know it's, you, it's rare to see a defective LP, but let's, let's for, the, for argument's sake, let's say the LP in some way has failed. So you, you could go in and just replace the LP, but this is really where we want to encourage the customers to go smart with their controls. Now, you can see with this system and the keen eye of the monkey will see that this is an RTS2 from last week with the indicator on it. So we want to upgrade this to wiser let's go and let's see what the actual nuts and bolts are involved with that so as always safely isolate whip the fuse out and stick it in your pocket and you're going to for this you're going to, it's going to be a wiser thermostat kit too so this is what you're going to get in the box you're going to get the heat hub and you're going to get the wiser room thermostat so undo the screws at the bottom Lift off the old LP. Now remember, there's no wiring to change here, so you can just clip the hub straight on and do up the screws. So that's the programmer swapped out. Now remember, we need to do something with that wired thermostat. So if I just take you up a little bit there so you can see the wiring center. Remember in here, we need to identify the thermostat wires, which we should be able to see are on terminals two and three. So remember these come out. And in the real world, you would be, these, you would be probably removing these completely, but we'll just stick them into dead terminals. We'll have another go at that one in a minute. So safely isolate the existing room thermostat. And then in its place, we've got the wire link. 
that goes across there. So what we're essentially doing is the relay that fires inside the hub on the heating channel, which is a function of the thermostat being turned up, that's no longer going through the switch in there. It is going straight through and it's energizing the motorized valve. So for, for a system like this, we've, we've just taken out the LP, we've taken the room thermostat out of the system, the, the, the hub is now wired directly to the central heating valve via that link, covers back on, and we're ready to go. Cover back on, in with the fuse, and then you'll see the standard boot up procedure for the hub. Wait until everything stabilizes, and you should get a solid green light here. Just takes a couple of seconds. And as soon as that light goes solid, you're ready to get in now and do the, the work on the app. So again, using your phone, go through, go through the installer mode, add the device, and then do the setup. You've also got the override buttons here. So if you want to just check to see if the valve is opening, uh, you can just press and hold the button. And when it's flashing like that, it's in the override condition. But just remember, if you do that, hit it again, just to knock it off. So that's how we would do an upgrade if, if say, there was a defective LP, uh, just linking out the thermostat. So that's the first demo done. Now let me bring you around to have a look at our old friend, the Worcester boiler. So what we're doing here, you can see the setup here is a, it's a combi boiler. So all you've got here is a receiver for uh, a Digistat. And this is a genuine defective Digistat, which has been set, sent in from the customer complete with annotation. So there you go, that's a, that's a dead Digistat. And you can see that the SCR is in alarm mode. So as far as the customer's concerned, the way they're controlling their heating now is by using the override button. So we could replace it with an RF701 pack, but what we're looking at here would be a wiser thermostat kit one. So again, the way we would, uh, the way we would upgrade this, again, safely isolate, fuse out, undo the screw, if you get the right screwdriver, undo the screws on the back plate, and the old SCR comes off. Now we're gonna be looking at one of these, which is a single channel hub. Clip it on. Now, incidentally, I will just say the wiring in there, you need to make no changes at all. It is absolutely as it needs to be. Remember, these are volt free. So you've got your neutral on the first terminal, you've got your permanent live on the second, and then you've got your, your LS, as this is a Worcester boiler, it's LS on number one and LR on number three and your earth. So this is just wiring straight off of the terminal block in the back of the boiler. So clip the single channel hub on and do up the screws. And then again, let's energize it. Fuse back in. Knock it on. Again, wait for it to, to come back on. You can see you get the long lights on there that while it's, while it's booting. We're waiting for the setup light to go solid green, which it will do in a couple of seconds. There it is. So now you're ready to go in on your app and do the installer journey as you would have done with that two channel. And again, you've got the heating override. So if you want to, you can just test to see uh, if that's gonna work. Obviously, this boiler here is not well because most of it is missing. So we're, not, we're never gonna get it to fire, but that's that. Okay, so that's it in terms of demoing. So let me bring you back out. Don't remember how to drive this. Okay, so let me bring you back in. And the last thing I'm going to talk about are the things to consider while you might not be able to fit wiser in place of that. So the favourite is gravity system. So if we think of a, of, a, of a traditional gravity system, now this is not just gravity hot water where you've got a header tank in the loft. 
This is a gravity system, something like a C plan where you've got no motorised valves. So for wise, you need to have a fully pumped system in so much as you need the, the output from those relays, if it's a two channel, needs to be feeding motorised valves so that you've got independent control. If you think about a traditional gravity system, you can't have central heating without hot water. If you try and do that, all you'll do is you'll run the, run the central heating pump and you'll circulate cold water around the system because there's, you're not kicking the boiler on. So if you remember from the LP, you, you, put, you can put this over to the gravity position, which ties the two relays together. If you select central heating only, you, it automatically brings on hot water. You can't do that with wiser. And the, the, reason we, the, the reason it's done like that is a gravity system is already designated as an archaic system, not particularly efficient. So what's the point of putting a super efficient system on, a, 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 on an archaic system? So that's why we would, that's why we don't support that. So if, if it's gravity, a true gravity system without any motorised valves, you, you're gonna, the upgrade is going to involve getting some motorised valves on the system for you to be able to support wiser. Other considerations, as always, RF and Wi-Fi. Now, we've talked about this before, the hub broadcast, it's a separate network. So, you, you as well as the Wi-Fi coverage, you may need to consider wiser plugs if it's a big property. And again, I've sort of talked that to death in previous videos, so go back and have a look at that. But certainly, if you, if it's, if you think it's going to be a challenging property, then maybe you, you need to take extra measures if you're going to upsell wiser rather than a traditional control. And finally, if you do get a, a system where you're going in, you're upgrading the full multi-zone, just be aware of the Volve bodies. Now it's quite nice, to I, I tend to carry the adapter kits with me, so I don't, don't take a head, but just keep an adapter on the van, so that if I go in, I can tell, if the customer starts talking about the, uh, upgrading to multi-zoning, I can quickly go around and just see if the adapter fits on the body. And the, the general rule is, if it screws on and it, it goes nice and tight and the adapter sits nice and plumb, there's, you've got about a 95% chance of it being able to control that radiator. Obviously, if the valve bodies aren't, aren't suitable, then you, 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 your option is to change out the valve body. But again, you, you've got to sort of look, view that on its merits. And again, that, that's, that could protract the job a little bit. So that's really it from me. That, that's really taking you through the sort of things that I've come up against when I've tried to upsell Wiser to customers. Uh, normally, they're pretty successful. I mean, you'll get a lot. You'll get some customers that are dead against it anyway, and obviously, there's not really much you can do do about that. But if you get the customers that are just a little bit unsure by going in and being able to talk them through this, there is a really good video actually on our website, which we'll put a link in the description. Um, the, that's good for both you and your customers and it takes you through the sort of energy savings and what you, you can expect so the website is a really good uh, repository for that sort of stuff um, so it's definitely worth having a look at that 